this guy was an MVP as well. He's more of a support player. And he actually plays Pathfinder, right? So he really plays around his role very effectively and actually uses Pathfinder to play a support role really well by using his ability to reposition. And by having the ability to reposition, he forces ranges that he's good at. That's what we're going to be looking at here in this VOD is this guy, um, how he plays around his weapons effect. Right, so this guy is a support player. He really looks for long range weapons. He's usually running a sniper with something. Uh, you'll often see him running the G7. Oh, he found one right now. And that's when his, his gameplay becomes interesting because he is very, very good with snipers. Yo, Mac, thanks for the follow, dude. Welcome. Hello. How are you, my dude? Welcome to the community. All right. I missed it. Did you hear people? I'm guessing you he heard people. All right. Gets a knock. Doesn't overexpose or re-peak instantly. Instead, goes for high ground. This is always a great habit to get into because it's not where they're expecting you to peek from. It's very much more difficult to, to push because if they climb up, you can literally get shots on them for free while they're climbing. Plus, right now, if they start a res, you can just use your sound. You don't even need to look to hear them starting a res. It's one of the sounds in this game that actually works. And then you can punish them and get a kill for free. So that's always very nice to play around. All right. Here's the guy. Inside, obviously, if you kick the door, you have to kick it twice. It gives them time to either get off the res or to stop it early and aim at the door. That's not ideal. So instead, he uses a nade. Which is not bad. It's not an ideal situation, but it's still early game, so you can get away with these risks. Uh, what weapons would you keep iron sights on in and in what circumstances? Uh, interesting cover huge. Hopping over the railer to use the, the railing. To use the pillar as cover. Yeah, we'll look at the cover usage in just a second. He's generally pretty decent with it, um, but he uses ranges more than cover, which is kind of interesting. And we're going to be seeing that later into the vault more. But like I said, early game is usually not that interesting. Um, the iron sights. I mean, it's mainly personal preference, right? When it comes to sight, the thing that really matters is that you hit your shots. That's all that matters. So whatever works for you, go with that. Like I really like the two times, but not everybody likes it. For um, but I will say one thing that you kind of want to be conscious of is that iron sights have different ADS sensitivities depending on the weapon class and the RE45 is the only pistol that is different for its weapon class. So if you use a G7 with iron sights you get a different scope sensitivity than if you use a wingman with iron sights. That can create some inconsistencies in your aim. So always using a 1x when you find one for example instantly can make your aim a little bit more consistent and in general uh, one of the big benefits of an optic that people don't really seem to think about whether it's one two or three x the all the opens ones that don't actually zoom you in is the fact that they push your gun farther down on your screen right so less of your screen on the bottom is actually covered by your gun and the reason that matters is because when you're ads it can be it can actually be quite easy not to see people at the lower half of your screen especially if you're holding high ground or not to properly see whether they're strafing left or right because your gun is obscuring them that's also why the uh, thin wingman models are so much easier to use than the thick ones right so those are kind of things to be conscious of but in the end it's just personal preference use whatever you prefer and whatever you prefer try to stick to that side as much as possible just to build consistency i wasn't actually paying attention because they were giving him such free kills that he really didn't even have to play that clean almost exam see you. good luck dude All right, so here he's overexposed a little bit, but as soon as he reloads, he goes recover, obviously, and then he properly uses the um, big. then he properly uses the what do you call it? Whatever this piece of metal for cover, but this is a bit better, especially right here, right? So you see him basically um, moving up to wherever he's partially covered, and then he moves to the left as the enemy moves to the right to kind of keep them close to that cover. This could be cleaner, but again, early game, he's taking risks that he normally wouldn't really. Plus, he has a G7 now, right? So he knows that at this range, most guns are not going to out-damage him. Like, if they have an AR, an LMG, or anything closer range than that, um, it's probably not going to win in this damage exchange. So as long as he can out-pressure them of push pushing him, like that Pathfinder was trying to get closer to him, as long as he can provide enough pressure that it's impossible for them to traverse closer to him, he can take risks that they can't take just for having a weapon that is at its effective range. Right, so the wingman and the scout are considerably stronger at that range than almost every other gun in the game. And because of that, he can play very oppressively. Right, He can basically be very annoying and very impossible to push. Right, that's something we're going to be seeing a lot. 
I don't even know if this is the game I wanted to break down of him, but that's alright. Almost all of his games are pretty good to look at. Alright, as soon as he gets shots from behind, obviously he doesn't want to be sandwiched by these two, but he can push in on this guy because he's very, very low health, so he can take you know minimal damage by pushing in here. Um, plus, he does have a, a decent close-range weapon in the wingman. If he didn't, he probably would have gone for height or grappled to distance instead. But he can get away with this, because he already put this guy on one shot. Keeps in mind that he's getting pushed from behind. And just like before, where's the Gordon Ramsay-ish Rose? Uh, that's not this VOD, that's another VOD, but we'll get to it. Yeah, and instantly goes for height. Like, resetting to height as a habit is very, very powerful to get into, especially if you're more of a support player that sticks a bit more to snipers, ARs, etc. than shotguns and stuff like that, right? If you're more of a shotgun user, then you more want to play around corners, baiting people, around doorways, stuff like that. But if you're like a path user that likes playing from range, then this is a very good way to do that. Alright, rest is his teammate, because he's a good dude. And something we're going to be noticing as well is that um, this guy takes pathing like this that I wouldn't regularly recommend. He takes very, very, very open pathing um, as Pathfinder. And he re the reason he does that is to be able to scout people from very, very far away. Right, So he doesn't want to be in positions where somebody might be just around the corner. Instead, he wants to be in positions like this where, yes, he's very far out in the open by standing here, but he has a sniper, which means that as long as these enemies don't have snipers, um, because he's so good with them, he can completely uh, oppress them by abusing range. So we're going to see him using a lot of open pathing and getting away with it just by abusing the fact that he's a very, very good sniper player and people can't really counter him when he does that. Let's see how this fight devolves. We see some uh, some people in the uh, the five story building right here. Right. He scouted two so far, so he knows that it's more than one enemy, and he's staying at effective sniper range. Notice how he's not pushing up to the building because as soon as he pushes up to that building, he's not going to get any value out of his scout. Right? If, you if you're running a scout, then you don't want to be pushing that until you've broken an armor, gotten a knock or something like that. Because then you may as well be running an R99. Right. And because he didn't shoot early, these guys actually had no clue that he was constantly looking at them. And he's able to abuse the fact that she isn't LOSing him because she doesn't know he's there. And because of that, he catches her healing. So it's a free kill, just by the fact that he's just waiting for a, a good opportunity. Which is nice. Stuff like this. He's standing out in the open, but notice how little damage he takes because he's being shot by, I believe it was an hemlock or something like that, and it's just not effective at this range. And he only needs to shoot tw back twice to outdamage that opponent, like really easily. So he's able to expose himself just by forcing really, really long ranges. Plus, nice little head glitch here. Most of his body is covered by this um, glass roof, whatever you want to call it. Head glitches are always very strong and difficult to counter. So if you see the opportunity for one, take them. Even here, going for height, right? Plus the ability to drop back down behind him because he knows there's no enemies there, which creates some safety. He knew he already had two knocked, so quick clean up from there. Pretty nice. And his teammate went down again because, of course, that's what teammates do. <laughs> I think he just heard somebody on his left zip lining to the top where he just was. Um, I have the sound a little low, so let's just go back and make sure I didn't mishear that. Right, yeah, so here we saw it. I didn't miss here. There's a zipline right there and somebody took height. And that's why he's grappling here. Because he could walk and get this banner. But he instantly wants distance where he can abuse the range of his uh, loadout once again. Right, So he just wants to abuse the scout as much as he can for early damage. And then once he gets enough damage or enough knocks, he can push in and win the fight. And that's also where Pathfinder is extremely powerful. And he's using it extremely well for this playstyle. In the fact that if you're playing, let's say, Wraith and you get a knock from super far away with a longbow or a Kraber or a scout, there's nothing you can really do except for portal it aggressively to close the gap fast enough to get any value out of that, right? So you're not going to get much value out of her kit by playing in that way. And he's playing Pathfinder, which most people see as a very aggressive legend, but because he can force these long ranges, because no legend is faster, plus grapple in very, very quickly if he does get a knock with the scout, he's actually using Pathfinder's kit very well. And that's not something that most people kind of realize, is how to use that re, uh, reposition potential properly. 
And it's actually a very powerful way to play path. And this is also kind of how path gets played competitively, more as a flex support than as a fragger. Kind of depends on the meta, but here you can see it, right? Three people focusing him. He was pretty much standing out in the open, but there's nothing they can do because they're not running snipers. And so in the position that they are, they're not going to be getting any value. And you can just spam at these people for free. And unless they drop down and go inside the building, which for some reason they're not doing, they just can't counter him. There's nothing they can do. Right? This is the power of playing at your effective range. If you're pushing somebody that has a sniper with an SMG and you get in their face, it doesn't matter how good they are, you're going to win that fight. And vice versa, if you have a scout like this and you keep forcing these very, very long ranges where they can't really push you because there's this really open area in front of you between you and the enemy, then the only thing they can do is run to cover. That's literally the only, the only thing they can do. They're not going to out damage you with an AR or an SMG at that range. Here, again, um, this is what we were talking about before. Look at his pathing. This is pathing I would generally never recommend. Like, he's going all the way out through the open. But why is he doing it? So that he can spot people from very far away. And if he does get into a fight here, there's nothing they can do to force a close range engagement. Now, he does put his grapple on uh, on cooldown to do it. So that's a little bit of a risk that in ranked he probably wouldn't take. But it is pubs, so... And being oppressive. Keeping range, right? Doesn't go straight after them. Get some height above them. It's really, really abusing that, uh, that powerful long-range weapon. He's emphasizing on elevation. Absolutely, of course. Because elevation is more difficult to push. He can keep this distance between them by using not only open areas in his pathing, but also using high ground, right? So we saw him using it in the buildings. Um, we see him using it here as well. Uh, the higher up you are, the harder you are to push straight up. Like, the only people that can push you somewhat easily if you're on high ground are other pathfinders. And so if you have long range weapons, and especially if you have snipers, uh, then, you know, this this is how you get value out of them, right? So that's exactly why we're looking at this VOD, because this guy is one of the best sniper players there is. And if you want to learn a more supportive play style, um, like how I sometimes play in ranked, for example, when I run snipers, then this is the way to do it. And this is one of the people you should be looking at. Um, also, <laughs> your name is a bunch of numbers, but 055, thank you for the follow, my man. Welcome to the community. Even if you are anonymous as hell, you're still very welcome. Hope you're having a nice day. So yeah, abusing elevation is great, but there's a lot of people that, you know, look at my videos, they hear me say high ground is overpowered, so abuse it, and they take high ground with an R99 and a PK, and they hold a building in the middle of capital and wonder why they never win the fight. Like, that's not effectively playing around your weapons. If you've got an R99 and a PK, you want to be fighting inside of the building and not poking from the top of it. If you've got a sniper, you want to be holding the top, so that's very difficult to push you. So it's really, really about knowing what weapons you're running and how to get value out of those. Running in sight, obviously instantly swapping to his wingman because the scout is not going to get much value here and the wingman is, right? Right, too many people there. Instantly resets to height. Um, he probably could have used that grapple better by going for height here, but obviously he's being chased by three people and he's just trying to get distance first. He doesn't really have to load out to be 1v3 in close range. Like, he doesn't have a PK, he doesn't have an R9. The best he's got is a wingman, so this is too difficult. And he goes for range first, nothing else. Probably gonna reset the height here. Yeah, okay, he's gonna reset the height, and obviously for the same reasons as before. I wouldn't even have popped the syringe, I would have gone for height first, but they're not chasing him, so it's alright. As a person who played with the G2 on... Wait, what? Uh, with the G2 on high ground in... Team, uh, sorry, Titanfall 2. Um, it will never get old to see SMG users pushing me. Well, that's yeah, that's exactly how you abuse it, right? You want to be in positions like this, where if these guys want to push from this building up to you, they have to traverse uh, a long distance out in the open, or the Pathfinder has to isolate him from his team, and you can punish that with your scout. Right, now they're fighting, so he's going to risk going in again. He does have his QF cooldown, right? So if things go poorly, he can grapple back up to the high ground, and the only person that can chase him is the path. He has digi plus there's smoke there, so that's always free kills, right? If you have a digi, you will always be looking for caustics and bangalores that you can abuse. Awesome. That worked out well for him. Right. They're rising inside. Once again, resetting to height. Always resetting to height. So that if they want to push him, they have to climb up since they're not Pathfinder, which he can then abuse by shooting them when they're in a, you know, locked in the climbing animation. We saw this in the aggressive playstyle of Raz, 
and in the supportive playstyle of Akalik, like they both know how to abuse that. That's a nice grapple, yeah, even a very short grapple like that can be very, very powerful. If you just know what you're doing, if you know that you're putting yourself in a position where they are punishable if they chase you. What's up, Joker? Welcome back, my dude. Happy you're back in, into the game. I haven't seen you in so long. Interesting choice with Wingman as secondary. I would have grabbed an R9 myself. He usually grabs an R9 as well. Yeah, I think this was just more like he f happened to find it. Um, the R9 is obviously a little bit more powerful close range than the Wingman. Although the Wingman, if you actually hit your shots, has more damage output. Um, I do believe that Arka also prefers an R9 as secondary. <laughs> so yeah, R9, PK obviously make the loadout more versatile, right? But it does mean less DPS output because there's less range to them. The Wingman is more versatile with range by itself. It just means you have less close range damage. But then again, if you're confident that you can hit your shots with it, which honestly is not that many players that can consistently hit shots with the Wingman, but if you can, then it's still a pretty solid close range choice. Not the best, but definitely not bad. If I, if I don't have a better opportunity or I just don't have the ammo to run an R9, then I might be running um, a Wingman at close range as well. Yo, Bert! <laughs> Five months subbed as well with a tier one thump. Thank you, sub. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Welcome back. How are you, man? Bert, I hope you enjoyed your break, and I hope you're as happy to be back as we are. Dude. <laughs> it's good to see you. All right, and again, um, we've been talking about this a bunch of times already, but look at this positioning. This is the type of positioning that I generally advise against because he's really, really out in the open. But why does he do it? Why does he get away with it? And why is it so powerful? Because he's in an area where he's just completely surrounded by open ground, plus he can easily drop behind cover from where he is if he wants to. And so if people want to push him, they have to push through the open ground into his G7 shots, which is almost impossible if you don't have a sniper to counter pressure yourself. So he's really, really a few, uh, abusing his loadout here. And it works out, because there's nothing these people can do back against it. 